Hello everybody. For this episode we're going to start off with a review of some new Reaper miniatures and the first two blisters that we'll look at come from the Chronoscope line. The first one is an Andromedon Vizier and it's definitely a sci-fi miniature. Uh, he's got a large almost headdress but it's it's almost sort of like a backpack on his back that's made up of large feathers and the detailing on those is really crisp and clean. He's got long flowing robes on and on the front of the robe and also on his headdress the detailing or the strange symbols have been sculpted on so those should be pretty easy to pick out while you're painting. Uh, he has no nose so he's definitely a sci-fi guy. He could probably fit into a fantasy genre also. Uh, on the robes, pretty much the only thing I had to clean up were a couple of mold lines, and there was a little bit of cleaning up on the feathers, but otherwise he was pretty quick to get out of the package, cleaned up and primed and ready to paint. Okay, the second blister we're going to look at is a set of four gray aliens, and you get four of these little guys in the blister. You also get two round bases. I'm probably going to put all four of them on individual bases rather than having them in groups of two, but if you want to, that's fine. Now you get four different poses here. One of them is holding up a peace sign, but he also has his fingers crossed behind his back, so he's up to no good. You have another one who's putting on a rubber glove, and when it comes to little gray aliens, that's probably no good going on there too. He's probably going to probe somebody. You have another guy who has a clipboard and a pen in his hand, so he'll be taking notes on whatever experiment or probing they're about to do. And then you have another guy who's carrying a gun, so he'll just be standing guard making sure their victim doesn't run away. Now these guys all have big bulging eyes, and you can see their fingers and their toes, but there's not a lot of features on their body itself, so either they just don't have them or they're wearing some kind of suit. And each of these four guys needed a little bit of cleaning, but not too much. Uh, mostly there was a mold line across the top of their head, but it wasn't too thick. This next figure is called Sioni, and it's a sorceress from the Pathfinder line. And you get a couple of different pieces in this blister. First off, you get the figure itself, which is the bulk of the miniature. And it's got a pretty scantily clad female magic user type. Could be a sorceress. Uh, you could use her for just about any kind of spellcaster if you wanted. But then you also get a sprue that has four other pieces on it. You have her hand, her left hand that has a staff in it. You also have a left hand that's open like you see here in the picture. So you can choose what you want to put on there. You get her right hand as a separate piece also. And then you get a scabbard or a staff that fits onto the back of the model. And that just pretty much glues right into place. It doesn't have a peg or anything. Now she needed a little bit of cleaning. There was some flash here and there. But if you want to, you can move the ponytails around. You just be careful not to break them so you can give that a little more sense of motion. The casting is very crisp and clean and the facial features are excellent. The miniature also has a nice aura or feel of animation to it. It looks like she's moving, casting a spell. So excellent figure here. The fourth figure we're going to look at is also from the Pathfinder line and with this one you get a snake lady figure who she's carrying a spear in her right hand but her left hand is sort of moving through her hair almost like she's trying to use some kind of psychic power or something like that. The scales on the bottom half of her torso, really well done on the snake part. And some of those scales extend up onto her upper torso and her arms. Now her face is very non-human. She has big bug eyes and what almost look like gills instead of a mouth. It could be a helmet, but I really think it's probably more of just her. But cool model here, but she did have a little more cleaning necessary than some of the other models. There were extra bits from the casting process, but really no mold lines on her that were visible. Um, she would be usable in any fantasy setting. I could also see dropping her into a Reptus army for Warlord as a spellcaster, and I think she'd do fine in pretty much any fantasy setting. That's the end of our reviews for this episode, and thanks for putting up with our first attempt at 360 Views. Okay, I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to show you Reaper's sister site, and this is called ReaperGames.com, so we're going to head over there right now. And over on this site, you'll be able to see a lot of things about their different games that Reaper offers, and today we're going to look specifically at Warlord. And you can find information about the game itself, you can find out about the world of Warlord, the different factions, you can read a little about each one of them here, you can also click on a link to see the models in each faction. You can also click here to see what you need to play the game. And this gives you a little rundown about dice and tape measures and stuff like that. 
thing I wanted to show you most of all today is a data card search and this is going to help you find the different models and see the stats for the ones in your army and you can search lots of different ways but since I'm building a darkspawn army right now I want to see all the darkspawn warlords so I'm going to click on those two sections here I'm going to come down to the bottom and click search and in a second we'll see the warlords that come up for the darkspawn army okay so we've got the three results that come up here. We've got Rothros, Zeldorian, and the Witch Queen. And you see a little bit of information about the three of them here, but where it says view check stats, you can get a lot more information. You can pick to view the data cards or the images or both. I want to see both. So I'm going to click here and then they're going to come up. And now you see a image of the miniature and the data card for each one of the three results. Now the picture of Zeldorian here is actually the old model, the new one just hasn't been updated here yet, but you can see the different stats and the pictures of the models. Now if you want to see other kinds of models, let's take a look and we'll see. I want to see all the soldier models for a Reptus army, let's say. So I would click here on Reptus, click on Soldier, click Search down at the bottom, and then all my results are going to come up. Really good utility here, lets you see a lot of the different models and the stats for them before you commit to purchasing something. There's also a utility here to help you build your army, makes a whole army list for you when you plug in what you want to play with, and we'll definitely be taking a look back at reapergames.com in the near future. Okay, the last thing we're going to do for this episode is take apart a Warlord data card so you have a little more familiarity when you see them on ReaperGames.com. And the first thing that you see on every card is going to be the name of the model. So here we have Zeldorian Tyrant of Darkness, and you can see the current model picture over on the left-hand side. And the next thing every model has is going to be the affiliation. This is going to show the faction it belongs to and the alignment of the model. So as you've guessed, he's a Darkspawn model and he's evil. No big surprise there. And then you have the cost of the model. He comes in at 200 points, so it's a fairly expensive model. He's going to take up about 20% of my 1,000 point army. And then the next thing that we've got is the rank of the model. Now he's a Warlord model, and for a leader type model you have Warlords, Captains, and Sergeants. And next to Warlord you also have a couple of numbers. Now these numbers mean very specific things. The first one is going to be the minimum number of soldier models that have to go along with him. So he has to take at least six soldier models with him. The number after the dash is the maximum number of soldier models. So Zeldorian has to have a minimum of six soldiers with him. He can have a maximum of 15. And the number after the slash are the number of elites that can go with him. Now the elites are things like uh, heroes, spellcasters, clerics, things like that. So he has a total size of a, a unit that's going to be built around him, or in Warlord what's called a troop. His troop would equal somewhere between 7 and 17 models. The next thing you're going to see is the base size. In Warlord you have four different sizes of bases. Zeldorian's on a large base. Now a standard base for most foot troops is going to be a 25 by 25 millimeter square. Cavalry models and some monsters are going to be on 25 by 50 millimeter rectangles. A large base is a 40 by 40 millimeter square. And then you have giant bases that are 50 by 50 millimeter. The next thing you have is the race of the model. And as you see here, Zeldorian's an aberration, but they can also be things like dwarf or elf, things like that. And this is going to have different in game effects where you have special abilities that only affect certain races. And the last thing we'll look at right now is going to be the stock number of the miniature. And this is where you can look it up on either ReaperMini.com or ReaperGames.com to get the data card or buy the model in the online store. We'll pick up with the rest of the data card in the next episode, which you'll see in just a couple of minutes.